you were like supercharging the virus. <laughs> you were making him so much stronger. Hey everybody, Ben and Ashley here. We're back again. And today we're talking about antibiotics and your gut microbiome. So we all know you've probably had a cold or a flu in the past. Maybe you've had a sore throat, ear, ear infection, a UTI. Or even acne or maybe you've been diagnosed with Lyme disease or maybe you think you have a parasite or maybe you're even just being told by the doctor that the best course of action is taking an antibiotic for whatever symptoms or conditions you're dealing with. So today we're just going to share a little story. Um, the story is uh, how all of this started, the chronic illness for myself, how it all began. And so back in August 2015, I was on a trip down to Mexico. And while I was there, on the way home, I was hit with all of these symptoms. And I'm talking vertigo, I'm talking heart palpitations. My whole body had tingles and numbness to it. I was off balance, I felt like I was walking on a boat. And then the blurred vision started, and the sensitivity to light, and the constant headaches. And I couldn't figure out what was causing this. And it got to the point where I ended up in the emergency room, what was it three times in a week? Yep. Yeah, it was scary. It was about two weeks before our wedding and they had no idea what was wrong with him. The only thing that they could find was that he had an elevated white blood count, and so they were gonna put him on 10 days of antibiotics. They thought maybe he had a bacteria infection. And two days before the wedding was like my last two days on the antibiotics. And I remember when I finally got off them, it was like, I felt amazing. It was like I, I felt like my symptoms and conditions had had gone away. And the reason I felt this way was because the antibiotics killed all the good bacteria as well as all the bad bacteria. And it wasn't until we found Anthony William and, and we read his first book that we started to understand the antibiotic and the bacteria connection and how antibiotics kill both the good and the bad bacteria and I was experiencing some die-off and that's why I felt so good. Fast forward, we got married, got our rings on our fingers, <laughs> <laughs> we made it through that and go six months down the road and six months down the road I'm still dealing with all my symptoms, all my same conditions, nothing's going away. At this point I've been going from doctor to doctor, specialist to specialist. They said I had anxiety, IBS, Crohn's disease. They even had a doctor suggest I had Lyme disease. I mean, no one really knew at this point what I was actually dealing with. And they finally settled on parasites, that I was in Mexico and I, I must have caught a parasite. And so the course of action for a parasite is, of course, another round of antibiotics. So then I did another seven days of antibiotics, which same deal, felt good for a couple days, and all the symptoms and conditions came back. And fast forward a year and a half later, still dealing with all my symptoms, all my conditions, and that is finally when our prayers got answered and we found medical medium. Yes, and that through that is how we figured out that Ben was suffering with the Epstein Barr virus, and viruses love antibiotics. So it was basically like trying to put a fire out with gasoline, and it just made everything worse. Yeah, it was like 
you were like supercharging the virus. <laughs> you were making him so much stronger, and then you had nothing in your in your gut microbiome to fend these these things off. Yeah. So they just continued to get worse and worse and worse. So I continued to get worse and worse and worse. Now don't get us wrong, we're not saying to never use antibiotics. There are certainly emergency situations where antibiotics are appropriate, but know that antibiotics don't kill viruses. Antibiotics are good for, let's say you go to spider bite, bee sting, tick bite, and part of the creature's um, limb or their body is lodged in your skin and causing an infection like a bullseye or something of like that. Um, that's when antibiotics would come of use um, to help prevent any further infection. And you may not even need the full dosage that the doctor is prescribing to you. So that's something to just be mindful of. Yeah, and, and when we say like bullseye, we're not talking Lyme disease. You know, Lyme disease is not bacteria like what the medical community explains it to be. Yep. It's actually viral. It's in the herpes family. Yep. So uh, don't be fooled by the whole Lyme thing. Yeah, so antibiotics will not work for Lyme because Lyme is, is viral. viral. Antibiotics contain petroleum, which will then end up deep in your liver, as do many other prescribed medications and petroleum unfortunately feeds viruses. Now let's say you're in the same boat as me. Let's say you got prescribed that antibiotic, you took it, and it didn't help. And now you are you don't know what to do. Know that you can fix it, you can rebuild your system. Um, it may take a year, it may take a little bit longer, but you need to rebuild the good bacteria in your stomach rebuild your hydrochloric acid in your stomach also rebuild the b12 in your system and reduce the inflammation that was caused by the antibiotics and then you got to boost your immune system and the yep. b12 will help in boosting that immune system and then you remember the petroleum is now sitting in deep in your liver so we've got to get that out of the liver we've got to detox the liver yep. And then you've got to free yourself of these viruses. So you've got to incorporate things that will take care of these viruses. Now, I know what you're thinking. Hey, I don't have any viruses. I don't have any issues. So I don't need to worry about getting rid of those out of my system. Unfortunately, we all carry viruses, even if you don't show any chronic symptoms, we all carry it in our system it's it's sort of unavoidable um, nowadays because there's so many strands of every single virus there's about 60 different varieties of the Epstein-Barr virus there's about 30 different varieties of the shingles virus there's also HHV 6 7 and then the undiscovered 10 through 16 there's herpes simplex 1 and 2 and then there's the Stegomegla virus and now the coronavirus. Yep, unfortunately. And a lot of these viruses also come with bad bacteria, like a type of strep. You guys, as you can see, we are running out of daylight. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to have to make a second half of this video where we share how you can rebuild your gut health after antibiotics. So, yeah, we're going to be sharing a lot of things you can do to improve your gut health. We'll be talking about the Unforgiving Four. We'll be talking about heavy metals and how to remove those heavy metals, which play a role in this whole this whole picture. Yep. And you'll want to definitely tune in because we're going to talk about the trendy things out there that don't actually help your gut health. Yeah, and a lot of doctors will give suggestions on a lot of these trendy things so it's important to stay tuned for this next one yes <laughs> yes that way you can make sure you will heal to your fullest yes can you guys still see us can you see us okay all right well we'll see you guys next time be sure to subscribe 
hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we post a new video. Can't wait to see you guys again. We'll see ya. See you on the next one.